Graphics have come a long way. Nevertheless, from as far back as I can remember, racing titles have pushed their hardware to the limit, going as far back as Top Gear Rally 2 for the Nintendo 64, the Gran Turismo titles for PlayStation, and Forza for the Xbox. The graphical fidelity has always been top tier for the respective hardware. On the other hand, sim racing titles have for the most part put physics first, which has led to some of the greatest driving experiences you can have. Kuno Simulazione has blended these two aspects to provide one of the best racing titles on the market. Not only do the cars feel amazing, but the graphics are top notch as well. Keep watching as we explore a secret way to get the most out of Vaseto Corsa Competiciones graphics. If you're interested in buying the Sim Magic Alpha Mini, be sure to watch my Before You Finance video on the Alpha Mini to ensure that you are making the right choice. Released in 2018, Assetto Corsa Competizione has grown to be the industry GT3 and GT4 sim racing title. Kunos has progressively updated ACC making significant updates to how these machines handle. With the recent 1.8 update, ACC now supports AMD FSR and Nvidia DLSS, which may help you achieve these settings. I want to give a shout out to Boosted Media and Race Beyond Matter as the videos they have uploaded have helped me fine tune these settings. Make sure to check out their channels as they provide amazing sim racing content. Are you tired of opening up the JSON files in order to fine tune the settings for Assetto Corsa? Are you tired of NVIDIA's very hidden miss approach to triple screen rendering? Well I have the solution for you. Make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe for sim racing content. If you don't have a race department account yet, right now is the perfect time to sign up as we'll need it for the following steps. You gotta click on the register button, scroll all the way down and click on join with a basic account here. This is where we'll type in all our information and get going. Once you're all signed up, you want to go ahead and click on the link in the description. Everything will be listed on that page. We'll go ahead and download the first program, Reshade. Click on this download button. Click on download here again. Let's head back to the page. Download simple runtime window editor. This will help us with triple screen mode. Click on that link. Click on this free download page and then click Softpedia Secure Download US No Profile. Let's head back to the race department page and download the last of the files that we need. Click that download button on top. And now we're ready to begin the process of making ACC look really awesome and realistic. Now that all the files are downloaded, let's open up ACC and head over to the options and video settings. Open up the zip folder which includes all the video settings that we need. I will only be going over the most important ones in the video. Just make sure you take a look at those. From here we want to make sure that we are disabling full screen resolution. I have my resolution set to 1600 by 900 just to make it easy for me to work with. You want to make sure that you have vSync disabled and your frame rate limit can be anything you desire. I have set it to 60 for my sweet spot. Shadows and shadow distance are set to epic within my settings, but you can lower these down depending on what type of hardware you're running. We want to ensure to have temporal anti-aliasing on. If you're having a hard time running these settings and you have an RTX card, I would recommend turning on DLSS quality. And if you're running any other type of card, I would recommend turning on FSR. This will increase your performance significantly. Scrolling down, effects and post-processing will be set to either high or epic. Going down below that will decrease the visual quality significantly. The mirror resolution, you can drop that down to ensure that your game runs properly. Now we want to have the material quality set to epic. Temporal upsampling should be enabled. Bloom quality will be set to epic and volumetric fog will be set to high. If you decrease the bloom quality below high, it will have a significant impact to your visuals. Now for the image customization, you want to ensure to have these the exact same way I have them now. With the only exception being motion blur, you can disable that. Now you can hit apply and you're set to go and we'll go ahead and install reshade. We'll now open up Steam, go to your Steam library and right click on ACC. Hover over the menu and select browse local files. The location for ACC should now be open. Let's open up the Simfin reshade downloaded files. Now go to the AC2 folder, binaries, win64. Now drag and drop the Simfin reshade preset. And then drag and drop the SWRE triple screen preset. Keep this folder open so we can install reshade. Let's install reshade now. If AC2 doesn't automatically pop up, you can hit browse and then we'll copy the folder location and paste it here. Now we select AC2 Win64, click open, hit next, DirectX 10, 11 and 12, click next. Select a preset to install, we'll hit browse and we'll select the Simfin Reshade preset. We'll select Realistic V2, hit next, hit next, and then this is all set to go. Let's open up ACC to ensure that Reshade is installed properly. So since this is our first time running the game with Reshade, the game might take a little bit to open. Just give it some time, you should be good to go. So if you've noticed, the game's menus look a little weird. Let's fix that. 
hit the home key and skip the tutorial. Go over to the settings tab and then click on effect toggle key. We can set this to anything we want on the keyboard. I have it set to L just to make it easy for myself. Now click anywhere in game and press the home key. Try out your toggle key make sure it's working properly. It's working great. The filter is all set to go and now it's time to set up the triple screens. Let's minimize ACC and open up SWRE. Now click on select running applications. Let's sort the applications alphabetically by double clicking on process name. Now select AC2 Win64 by double clicking. Depending on what type of settings you're running, your settings will differ. The Symfin preset folder comes with three common presets from 1080 triple screen, 2K triple screen, and 4K triple screen. If you're running any of the presets that I mentioned, you can hit on load profile, go to the ACC directory, go to the SWRE triple screen preset folder, and from here you can load up the most common resolutions. In my case I have 2K monitors so I'll be loading this one up. If you are running an unusual resolution you can easily set your own preset for ACC. If you're running triple screens for let's say a 2K widescreen monitor with a resolution of 3440 by 1440 we'll have to make our X position to negative 3440. The width of the monitor will need to be multiplied by 3 since we're using triple screens so 3440 times 3 will give us 10 320. The scale will be set to 1, the Y position will be set to 0, and the height will be set to 1440. From there you can save your preset and you'll never have to go to the JSON files to change your resolution ever again. Now once you've saved these presets, they will automatically load into that folder anytime you open up SWRE, which is awesome. No, sometimes the game will be behind the taskbar, so there's one workaround for this. Right click on your taskbar, go to taskbar settings and select automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. This should prevent any issues and you'll be able to enjoy the screen to the fullest extent. Now, in order for us to get the best FOV settings, we'll need to head over into a practice session. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more sim racing content. Click on drive, hit the escape key, head over to view settings, scroll over until you see triple screen and widescreen, and we are only going to be changing one setting that should impact everybody on here. The distance from screens should be set anywhere between 500 and 560. This will give us the most realistic experience. And if you want to find out why, make sure to check out Race Beyond Matters video on how to get the best FOV. You can head back to the camera settings and adjust these to your own personal preference. Seeing the number of reshade filters out there for ACC, I always felt that something was missing. In real life, the colors are beautiful, the cars are bright, the grass looks green, the sky is blue. Most of the filters out there kill the colors, making it look awesome, but not really realistic. On a sunny day, everything is bright and it looks warm. This is what I think the filter I have come up with does best. It's able to adapt to all sorts of light, giving out the best picture possible in any situation. If you've noticed, I have included two of these presets. V2 is for making sure the filter works outside the car, while V1 will give you the best experience when you're in the cockpit. V2 gives out a balanced experience for both outside and inside the cockpit. Both of the presets look a lot better than the base game. What do you guys think? This brings out a whole new level of immersion into the game. Not only can you see the fine details in the driver's helmets like scratches and dirt on them, the color of the grass and trees look as if they were a lot more realistic. You can see the difference in the details here, it's almost a night and day difference. The steering wheel within the cars look so real, it's almost as if you can reach out and feel the Alcantara on some of these steering wheels. It's unbelievable how much detail was hidden within the game. The metal bars within the cars look so real, the way the light is bouncing off of them makes it look cold to the touch in this scene. The road detail is a major difference here. You can see every grain within the road. The tracks on the road are a lot more visible too. If you're off your racing line, these point out where some of the breaking points are. So this is a change that can impact your gameplay as well. I'd like to point out that whenever you are in the cockpit view, the reflections of light will hit the helmet and make a slight glare to the vision of the driver. The good thing is that these are toned down to reflect how they would really look like if you were driving inside the vehicle. This pretty much sums up all the changes. I am mind blown by how I was able to obtain this level of visual fidelity. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You won't want to miss my next before you find this video on the Toby 5 eye tracker that provides a light VR experience. And as always, Sanfin here, peacing out.